A good introduction to cinematography is the portrait and lighting the human face. I was thinking about how to introduce this lecture and I thought maybe I should say a few words first about what kind of inspires me about lighting. I remember a friend of mine, he was on a board of interviewers for students applying to get into university to study film. And one of the questions was, what is it that draws you to film? Why, why film? And one of the answers one of the students gave was the infinity of it the infinity of it, and I really loved that answer. I thought that was a great answer. And I guess if someone to ask me about light, I'd say one of the things that keeps me interested with lighting is the infinity. It's like the more you learn, the more fascinated you become with this subject, which is impossible to fully understand. The other thing I was going to mention was my interest in lighting and when I think back to my childhood and I remember being very affected by light, particularly when it got to twilight, I used to have this feeling of kind of like slight fear and kind of anticipation. It's almost like kind of solar energy turning to lunar energy. I became aware of how light affected me emotionally. A good introduction to cinematography is the portrait and lighting the human face. So this is a demonstration that we're going to show between the qualities of hard and soft light. What we've got set up here at the moment, so you've got a five foot panora softbox set up to represent our soft light. This would be understood in lighting terms as, as a relatively soft source. Uh, we've also got a, a dado uh, DLED light there as well, which is a focusing light, which is a hard light at a similar distance. What we're going to demonstrate is the relationship between hard and soft lighting, uh, what defines a, a light source to be hard or soft, and the, the physical law for this is it's a, the size of the source relative to the subject defines whether a source is seen as a hard source or a soft source. What we're going to do is flip between the two lights now and show the difference the light has on uh, Lavelle. So let's do that. So this is the hard light, and you can see that it's a lot more dramatic. The light's emanating from a point source. And the way I often evaluate the light, the hardness or softness of the light, is I put my hand in and I put my finger up. And as you can see, that's producing a very hard shadow on my hand. And if we flick back to the soft light again, you can see that the shadow's almost disappeared entirely. And the reason for this is, is that with a soft light, the source is a lot larger and the light's scattered and more diffused. And what it's doing is it's wrapping around the finger and it's filling in the shadow area. And we go back to the hard light again. And the hard light, because the light's emanating from a point source, it's not getting the chance to wrap around the finger. So it's producing, as you can see, a very hard, crisp shadow. And we call this the shadow line. So the line between the highlights and the shadow is the shadow line. And this is, this is something that we look at to evaluate the light. It's a very good tool actually just doing this. Oftentimes when you're placing lights, you don't always have your model in position. So, you know, if you're preempting what's going to happen, you can place your lights, you can just put your hand up and see the, the quality of lights being produced from a, a, any one source. So that shadow line is something we're always looking at as photographers and cinematographers. We're always evaluating the source of a, the hardness or softness of a light by looking at the shadow line. And this is particularly important when lighting the human face. So back to the hard light. So notice there's no shadow here. And back to the soft light. And notice the, the highlights here, here and here. And back to the hard light. The highlights change here, here and here. And back to the soft light. If we want to understand hardness or softness of light in terms of what we encounter in nature, uh, the sun, for example, is the hardest source of light, being a specular source, very far away, like a point source and produces, as a result, produces very hard shadows. And the sky, particularly on an overcast day when the whole sky is one big soft source, produces almost shadowless light, so it produces very soft shadows. Therefore, the most extreme examples of these qualities of light exist in nature. 
We often look to nature for lighting inspiration. As cinematographers, our job is to notice the light that inspires us and to be able to recreate it. The tools I'm showing you here allow you to evaluate the lights and better understand the physics of it and in turn how to apply it to cinematography. So here we are switching between hard and soft. Look at the nose shadow, the speed at which the cheek falls into shadow and the size of the reflection of the light source on the skin. Notice these changes with the different qualities of light. We portrait cinematography. It's really about the successful illumination of a person's face. And within that, you're either emphasizing or suppressing certain features of their face. You're drawing out certain aspects of their appearance. And, you're, and with that, you're also suggesting or conveying different sides of their character. The viewer will interpret meaning from the human face. Right? Whether that meaning is actually there or not to begin with is not the point. The point is that the viewer will interpret the meaning. And as a cinematographer, when you're applying a light to someone's face, whether you're aware of it or not, you are communicating a certain understanding of how that face is going to be recognised, how that face is going to be understood. The more aware you become of that, the more you're in control of that process. The primary goal of this video is to introduce some of the principles in cinematography through the act of portrait lighting, or the act of lighting a face. And we'll show practically how this is achieved. What, what I'm hoping will happen is that, you know, you'll build a sensitivity to light. You know, bringing what's unconscious more into our conscious minds. We start seeing light. It's really very craftsman-like. What you do is you, you just start studying the subject, and in that process of studying it, you become more sensitive to it. And by being more sensitive to it, you can start manipulating it in ways that you're aware of, but other people aren't. But what happens with studying light from a photography point of view, a cinematography point of view, is you start, your relationship with it changes a little bit, you become more intimately involved with it. And that's what I realise, is that the beauty of this process is you start seeing light. Light becomes your friend, almost. You take light away, you actually have nothing, yeah.